could I say to you, my background was in policing, um, I had 34 years in policing before I joined the inspectorate. When I joined in 2004, uh, I knew nothing about restorative justice schemes. The, the policing areas that I had been posted, uh, the schemes weren't operating, um, and I, I had really no knowledge of them. And so a bit of background reading, um, they were mentioned in the uh, Criminal Justice Review, which was really important, one of the, one of the strands really coming out of the, uh, the peace agreement um, and, and Good Friday Agreement. You know, let's have a look at our criminal justice system, see how fit it is for purpose, uh, now that we're in a different environment. Uh, so it was mentioned in there, and then of course, um, a guy that probably most people have forgotten about was Lord Clyde. Do you remember him? Yes. Yes. Lovely guy. And uh, he, he looked at this and he said, actually, this is, this is quite clever. And, and from Scotland, he was struggling with the, the issues around working class communities and uh, the distance that they were feeling from their justice processes. Uh, and he, he maintained a focus on this, and he kept talking about it, and it was really annoying the Department of Justice, to be honest with you. And he would continually criticise them for the lack of progress that they were making uh, uh, in terms of working with the schemes as they were emerging, uh, and, and, and how they were going to integrate within the criminal justice system. And of course, the system at that stage was extremely conservative. From the policing perspective, you had you had somebody like you or who, whose main focus was the policing board and uh, delivering uh, better investigative standards and, and trying to manage the organisation transitioning from the RUC into the police service for Northern Ireland. You had the prosecution service at that stage, which was ultra conservative, uh, which you know hadn't seen the light of day for years and really were were opposed to any concept of, of community coming closer into the criminal justice processes. You had the department, and at that stage some uh, quite influential <coughs> figures in there which were grounded in really uh, the conflict and, and just not really moving forward very much at all. Judiciary not really engaged with it. Uh, you have people like probation uh, and the youth justice agencies, but mainly probation, uh, who kind of would have known about this um, and would have said, well, actually, no, we, we think we do really good work there. So they, they were like a voice in the wilderness, together with some uh, senior police officers who had a personal experience with yourselves. So um, that, was, that was what we inherited, uh, and it was, well, how do we bring this forward? And uh, first chief inspector, Kit Chivers, uh, was lambasted when he went on a, a visit in 2003, 2004, with Marie Smith to uh, to Derry, Stroke London Derry, and uh, the only people he met up there were the restorative justice schemes. And it was, sorry, you're the Chief Inspector of Criminal Justice, you, you haven't gone through the doors of the police station or the, the, the uh, spoken to the local prosecutor or anybody like that, you're talking to the schemes. Well, the system went daft, and it was the criticism that he, that he, you know, uh, that he suffered as a result of it. Right, so we're watching all this, and politically, some political parties had, a, had adopted a stance, um, SDLP, uh, who were really against the whole concept of restorative justice and, and the influence that, uh, that they believed that uh, paramilitary organisations still had on, on the schemes themselves. Um, and then on the, on the uh, unionist side, you would have had, at best, just just don't talk about them, um, you know, just didn't want to really acknowledge them, weren't, weren't against them, but didn't want to come out and support them at all. So when we um, then pushed the department around, well, you're going to develop a protocol here. Well, the first drafts of the protocol were just incredible. And it was like, you yeah, have a laugh here. How, how can you expect community organisations uh, to uh, reach these sort of standards here. This, this is awful. Uh, and actually, the very benefits of uh, community restorative justice would be ditched here because, you know, they, they, they've got to be providing an alternative, something that supports and, and can really work with static reorganization. But actually, if you're applying these standards here, it just won't work. The, the communities won't support the schemes. 
and, and the, the whole thing will wither on the vine. And it really took a lot of effort. And, and to be fair, alternatives led the field in this because the, the Republican schemes were kind of a real no-no. And it was, uh, it was, so alternatives had, had, I think, invested in relationships which were embedded. Um, and, you know, so those relationships with some senior police officers uh, and with probation, etc., uh, and encouraged us to think, let's try and push this forward here. And of course, in the best Northern Ireland terms, I had to take everybody outside Northern Ireland and took them to Leuven, wasn't it? Uh, uh, to try and talk about the, the principles of this and could we come up with a deal um, that, you know, that would allow this to, be, to become workable. But actually, the alternatives led the field. And I've said that clearly, you know, and it was. Um, you know, even when we first looked at the, uh, the Republican schemes, it was a pre-accreditation uh, inspection for them. For yourselves, when we looked at it, we thought, actually, you know, the leadership here has really invested in systems and processes that thought it through very clearly, and uh, their governance arrangements were very good, um, and, and actually you were thinking ahead in terms of what you would need, the training of staff, the vetting of staff, uh, the fact that you know you had you had to um, be very careful about um, protecting the human rights of your your clients, um, that you were applying international standards in the way that you were approaching all of this, uh, and so I, I said that unequivocally. Alternatives led the way that others were then able to mirror and follow. And for us, uh, coming in to inspect your organisations, I remember my first meeting with yourselves up in Woodfield. Uh, and I, I'm going, well, I can't be bad here, you know, when you're sitting down to a big scone here at half and eight in the morning on a lovely cup of coffee on a cold winter's morning and, and engaging with people um, who were so committed to, to their own communities and to try and make things better. Uh, and that, that for us has been our experience over the time. And, and yes, uh, I have the capacity to come in and do unannounced inspections of yourselves. But I think it's that regular contact and that feedback from the mainstream organisations. You've worked hard at your relationships. You've really worked hard at it. And it, that pays off, you know, so that, um, and the most important one is the police. It's, it's that primary uh, response of agency in terms of criminal justice issues. And we know that you extend well beyond that. But actually the relationship with the police is, is, is a critical one. Uh, which is then supported and built on by others. Um, and, and so, um, for me and for our work, um, I always feel that we, we get our, you know, sometimes you, get, you, can, you can look at strategy documents, you can look at corporate plans, you can, you can be thinking, oh, what are we going to do in three, five years? Actually, coming out and talking to yourselves, talking to the people that you're dealing with, and how you deal with them actually earths our organisation and tells us this is a kind of a conduit in terms of where the justice system is, uh, how well you are being used, um, and, and indeed, you know, where the future possibly lies for us. Yeah. So uh, I was just reflecting with Kieran earlier on that all our, all our attention, well, of the main criminal justice organisations has, has been around politics, but actually, the real, where it's at is community. And, and no matter what's going on in London or Stormont or whatever, it's actually, it's, it's here that really matters because I, personally I feel that we have developed our understanding and hopefully that's been extended right across the criminal justice organisation in a way that it never was before. We know, we know where, uh, where our prison, prisoner population comes from. We know the impacts uh, of uh, deprivation, uh, unemployment, like never before. The academic research was always there, but justice systems were lazy, with the exception of a few, uh, to look at the research and to actually make those connections. You're living it. You're living it on a day and day, daily basis. You know the, the mental health issues that um, you know pervade our societies. The, the, the drug situation. In, in Northern Ireland, how it impacts on relationships, uh, even within families. Um, I, I know what now, uh, having spent 13, almost 14 years looking at um, 
at, at the, the back end of here when people are sent to prison. Uh, and try to unpick those stories uh, and unpick it up to the extent that it says to me actually if there had been an opportunity for people like you to get involved, to get alongside people uh, with the right levels of community support, actually they wouldn't have ended up here. We're getting there, we're slow learners. The system is our slow learners, to be honest with you. But the, the, if you if you listen to people like the Lord Chief Justice at the minute talking about um, you know problem solving courts that actually just send people to prison isn't an answer. Um, you know we have to find different ways of dealing with this. You've been doing that. You've been looking at these uh, and creating some of these solutions and giving us the confidence to say actually you know there are alternative ways. We need to think about. To Chester Street as the uh, as the answer to all the others because it, it won't be. So uh, I suppose that's what I want to say. Yeah, um, uh, personally, alternatives have led the way. Continue to lead the way in terms of of, of how you approach your work. Uh, uh, I love coming out, uh, talking to yourselves, uh, looking at the work that you're doing because there's levels of creativity and innovation there. That actually, the justice system can learn a lot from. So. I think that's all I want to say, thank you very much.